My name is Maddie and here I talk about all things related to a certain type of child psychological abuse called parental alienation. Parental alienation is when one parent uses manipulation and coercive control to turn their child against their other loving parent without true justification. I went through this for 20 years. I figured everything out two years ago and since then I've been on a really transformative journey to heal myself and rebuild my relationship with my dad. I want to start making more videos for people who have figured it out just like me. Disclaimer, I'm not an expert or a counselor or a anything like that. I'm just speaking from my own experience. When I learned the truth, everything felt upside down, backwards. I didn't know what was up, what was down. I questioned everything about my reality. It was just this sense of betrayal that I felt so played and I felt used. Worst of all, I went through this period of time where I was so discombobulated. I didn't know who to trust. I felt like I couldn't trust myself to know who to trust or trust myself to know what was real. So I want to start making videos for people who are going through what I went through about two years ago now. These might be suggestions for you to try and I'm not saying that it's going to help every person. I'm just trying to give my testimony and what has helped me and what's worked for me. So the number one tip I would give people who've figured it out is to get a therapist and not just any therapist, but a therapist who is knowledgeable about narcissistic abuse, childhood trauma, and hopefully even parental alienation. I think the most important thing when trying to find a therapist to help you through this is find someone who best suits your needs. My therapist has challenged my beliefs at every turn. She's not a therapist who just validates me. She does challenge me and that's been really helpful. I also think it's important for your therapist to be willing to learn about parental alienation. Another thing about therapy is people have found a lot of success with EMDR therapy, which is like rapid eye movement therapy. There's also some music you can listen to online called bilateral stimulation, and it will play music. It stimulates either side of your brain through the headphones. There's something about this that is able to get your brain into a higher state of functioning. So to turn off that part of your brain that is reptilian, I think it's the amygdala. Okay, I was right. It is called the amygdala. Basically how this was explained to me and correct me in the comments if you think I'm getting this wrong. The amygdala is the innermost part of the brain, the reptilian part, the oldest part of the brain, and it's responsible for 90% of decision making. It controls your fight or flight response. When you are activated due to trauma, you're really emotionally overwhelmed, your brain just resorts to that reptilian brain, the amygdala. What the bilateral stimulation music does is it's able to get your neocortex and your limbic system working again, <laughs> essentially. So it pulls you out of your fight or flight mode. I would highly, highly, highly suggest to get a therapist. I really don't think that you can get through this without someone who is professionally trained to help you through. My second piece of advice to people who have just figured this out is to find an outlet, something that helps you express the pain you're feeling so that it doesn't just get trapped inside of your body. There are a lot of different things that can work for you in this way. When I was going through the most traumatic parts of this, initially I did keep a journal and I'm glad I kept that journal. The other outlet that has helped me tremendously is exercise. As you can imagine, when you learn that one of your parents has lied to you about the other parent and stolen the relationship that you could have had with your other parent, there's a lot of anger that comes with that. I'd never felt that angry before in my life. I didn't want to feel that angry. I just wanted it to go away and I didn't know how to make it go away faster. So what I did is I started running again. I did have to start uh, a little slow, but I would just push myself at every turn and it will help not only because it helps you release your emotion and your anger and your frustration, but it also is going to give you a natural serotonin boost and a natural rush of endorphins, which 
will hopefully help combat the depression and anxiety even just a tiny bit. I know it's not gonna work for everybody, but if you have the means and the ability to exercise, I would give that a shot. You can learn a new skill. You can learn a new musical instrument. You can start a new hobby like a pottery class or a watercolor class. You can build a website. You can start a blog. You can even clean one hour a day, declutter, organize, read books, do yoga, start baking, throw yourself into learning a new skill or a new language, gardening. You can try your hand at photography or digital design or just about anything. You can start hiking, going into nature, but I would try to make it a creative outlet that, first of all, that you will do. That's the number one requirement. Just make it something that you will do consistently and that you will enjoy doing. That's the second requirement. It might take a little bit of trial and error to figure out what sticks and what really helps you, but I believe you really do need a creative outlet. A third tip is gonna sound weird, but it's something I did that was super, super helpful. I bet it could help some other people. Something to try anyway. I was so discombobulated that I made a schedule for myself, but I took myself out of the picture so that I wasn't making emotional decisions in my scheduling my time. I started to try to view myself like a third party observer. I would set up the most, the best schedule for that person so that they can start to begin to heal and thrive. I stuck to that schedule. Anytime that I felt overwhelmed, I had a panic attack, I felt um, really like I could not do it. I remembered that schedule. I would try to talk to myself like I was talking to a friend. And a lot of people call this whole type of thing reparenting. That's how it felt for me. It's not something that I'm done with either. It's kind of an ongoing process. Notice your thoughts as they come and go and try to take away the judgment of them and realize that you're going through something incredibly, incredibly challenging. If you do feel like your world is turned upside down and you're really emotional a lot, that's actually normal for this situation. My fourth tip kind of goes along with my third tip. My fourth tip is pretty important too. All of these tips I think are important, but my fourth tip is kind of crucial. It's really, really, really important, I believe, for people in this situation to be sober. It's hard enough as it is to try to gain your footing and figure out what's real in your life, what's real about both your parents, that to be under an influence that further alters your state of mind, I can't even imagine what that would be like and I don't think that would be good for anyone. So these tips are not in an order of importance because my fifth tip is actually my most important tip and that is to reach out to your parent, your targeted parent that you've believed lies about this whole time. You have the power now, you have the, the control now of how you want your relationships in your life to look. Reach out to them and when you do, I would really encourage you to just be honest, completely honest. If you've been through severe parental alienation, you have been lied to and you will never know the truth unless you get both sides of the story. I would encourage you to ask your other parent about their version of the story. When you're talking to your targeted parent, I would just encourage you to challenge each and every thought that comes up for you. I know this is probably gonna be really emotional. Reconnecting with that parent just might be the silver lining for you. Quite possibly might be your healthier parent and trying to get their side of the story so that you have an accurate representation of what you've lived through. My sixth tip for people who realize I've been alienated from my parents, you need to find your community. If you've been through this as a child, please join our support group. My seventh tip has to do with addressing the poor self-esteem and all of the really detrimental effects that have probably wrecked your confidence and your self-identity if you're going through this at this point. So my seventh tip is just, I'm just gonna call it mattering and hopefully you'll understand why in a second. Mattering is a core universal human need. Mattering is more than just the feeling of belonging to a group. It's also being missed by people in the group if you weren't there. According to Dr. Gordon Flett, quote, when it comes to self-esteem, you can like yourself and feel capable, but you still won't be a happy person if no one notices you when you enter a room. 
Another expert, Dr. Isaac Priel-Hensky, he's a professor of the University of Miami and co-author of the book, How People Matter. He says there are two parts to mattering and mattering is really important for someone who's been through parental alienation. To get that sense that you do matter is crucial. The first part is to feel valued. It's important to feel heard, appreciated, and cared for. And then the second part of mattering is to feel like you add value in ways that make you feel capable, important, and trusted. It's feeling valued and adding value. What does that mean day to day though? How can you develop the belief that you matter and that you add value to people's lives? To increase one's sense of mattering, experts suggest first identify your strengths. Try to brainstorm times when you have felt useful in other people's lives. Pinpoint areas where you're already adding value in other people's lives and take it up a notch. Maybe you are involved with volunteering somewhere. Well, maybe you can get a leadership position volunteering there. Think about things that you're good at and things that make you feel good when you're doing them and do those things. And then another thing you can do is try to adjust your relationships. You can tell people how much they matter to you and how much you appreciate them. Volunteering your time is a good way to get out of your own head and to feel like you matter and you're adding value to someone else's life. Fighting for a cause is one path to mattering. Maybe that's part of the reason why I'm doing this. The, the reason why is to fight for a cause it begets the kind of satisfaction that makes you feel valued. You, add, you feel like you're adding value to people's lives. And that can really help increase your self-esteem. That can help you feel like you're turning your pain into purpose. So the first step is to just think about where are you and who are you with when you feel like you matter most. And this is so important because feeling that you matter and believing that you matter is the key to happiness, better relationships, and self-compassion. I'm sure there are more than these seven tips, but that's what I've got for today. I hope you found this video helpful or insightful. If you know someone who's been through this as a child, and they need support, please send them to our support group. If you've been watching a few videos now and you haven't subscribed, please consider subscribing. Please like this video to get it in the algorithm so more people can learn and be aware of this type of abuse. If you haven't checked out our college campaigns, go ahead and check that out. We also have this awesome new website that we've been working on for a while. We have a, a weekly blog that goes out every Friday. Thank you for watching and I'll see you next time. Bye.